I love it when it gets towards fall and you start combining your beans, everything's going along nice, and then you get over to your corn and you start out in your corn and you realize, uh-oh, some of my corn fell over before I got here. Okay, that never ever <laughs> happens to anybody, Brian, because everybody's out scouting their cornfields because we know there are stock rot issues in parts of fields, in whole fields, some of them are variety specific. We know what's out there, so nobody's just blindly going into soybean harvest and saying, oh, I'll get to that corn later. Everybody has taken a look at that corn and, and that's why we're switching heads all the time, moving from corn back to beans. We need to because we got some fields that are falling over. Yeah, so are going to fall over. So obviously Darren is being sarcastic here because most every <laughs> farmer out there combines all the beans first and then does all the corn. And we do on our farm most years as well. But I'll say this, we are trying to look at every one of our corn fields every year simply because we don't know when we're gonna have a lot of stock rot problems. You get certain bugs or certain diseases in there and sometimes those are unexpected. You're not out scouting your corn in the middle of the summer because it's eight feet tall and it's just not a very fun job. So when you come late in the fall, you've gotta be taking a look at your corn. If you're starting to get some stock rot problems and you're worried it's gonna go down, even if it's 23% moisture and you say, well, I don't wanna combine anything over 18% moisture, sometimes you just have to take it because I it's a lot easier to combine the corn when it's standing up rather than to be walking out there picking the ears up one at a time off the ground if it's fallen over due to stock rot and we are seeing a lot of stock rot issues this year well you have to go into the season with good expectations for what's really going to happen out in the field you can't go in thinking you know what I'm spending all this money on my VT3 or triple stack corn I'm gonna plant corn I'm gonna spray roundup once I'm gonna come in and harvest and that's it that just doesn't work. There's too much going on out in that field and there are a number of different kinds of stock rots that are infecting any of those corn hybrids out there regardless of what your traits are. Well, I, I think the variable weather conditions we've had this year is probably the number one reason why we're seeing as much stock rot this season as we are. In the past, disease very often has been caused by lots of insect feeding. So we've got a bunch of BT corns out there but they're still 20% refuge acres, or hopefully 20% refuge acres, and you know we aren't controlling every insect out there yet. So, for example, did you spray for corn leaf aphids this summer? You know, anytime a bug feeds on your plant, it opens it up to disease. It's much more likely to get disease. And again, with the variable weather we had, we just saw a lot of disease entering into plants this year to go along with the insect feeding that we saw. So we're a little bit concerned out there. Now, I, I'm not going to scare you like like Darren is I'm and not say, trying oh, to it's, scare you. I'm just it's saying a disaster it's, it's out definitely, there. It's definitely out there. You need to be watching. <laughs> but I mean, honestly, every year, every one of our fields, we are taking a look at it right around harvest time. And we just say, okay, we know based on maturities, we should be combining these certain numbers first. And we want to take the drier corn out of the field first. And based you know, on that's planning a good day rule. too. Right. And based on planning date and maturities, we want to take the driest corn out of the field. Usually the driest corn has the most problem going going down due to stock rot. So that's one way to look at it. But also, you know, if you've got some Sunday afternoon or something, you want to spend a little quality family time with your wife and kids. I think you it's just a great to, way to spend a day. You just go out to a few of your fields <laughs> and just make sure everything looks okay. Just walk through your corn fields, just check the, the health of the ears, just shake them a little bit and take a look at those stalks. If the stalks are in pretty good shape, then you can probably wait a while yet. But every year on our farm, we seem to find one or two fields where we say, ooh, I'm really worried this stuff could go down if we get a big wind or something like that. So we try to combine those fields first. I'm ready to talk here. Brian just keeps on talking. You know, I a lot I of times <laughs> people that we that we know really well, some of our relatives will say, man, you guys get along so well on the show. And I say, you know what? Sometimes it just kills me when Brian keeps talking and I've got things oh. that I want to say too because- <laughs> I'm we're excited about this. It's a great topic <laughs> and it's something that we deal with every year at our farm. Well, it, it really is kind of fun to get out in the fields in the fall. The weather's nice. You've got this hopefully successful crop that you're taking a look at, but you do really have to look at your plants really closely when you're talking about stock rots. There's two things that I really like to look at with stalks when it comes to stock rot. First of all, just a couple of nodes up from the bottom. Maybe we're talking six inches up, maybe a foot up, something like that from the ground. Squeeze those nodes. If, if they're squishy, this is trouble in your corn plants. You want those to be firm and hard, a good, strong stalk. If it's squishy and you can just squish it with your fingers, you need to target that field for early harvest. The other thing to look for, if you say, oh, I don't know, you know, I, I'm really strong, I can squish any stalk. Okay, fine. 
what you want to do then is just pick out some stocks. Maybe you do 10 stocks in a row and just lean them over at about a 45 degree angle from the ground. So tip them over at a 45. If one out of those 10 stocks breaks, that's probably not so bad. But if more than one out of 10 breaks, you've got some serious issues out there and you need to harvest that field early. So do those couple of things in your field. Squeeze those stocks. Do a little bit of the bending of the stocks and see if you get any of them to break. If you see any issues out there at all, make sure you're getting out there early. Regardless of what it's going to cost you to dry that corn down, at least you've got it in the bin. It's not laying out there on the ground. So in summary, we want you to get off your chair right now after the show. You know, you gotta wait till at least after the show. <laughs> Go out in your field and, and do some checks on any of the corn that you have not harvested yet on your farm. This could save you a lot of time and money. So please just check your fields for stock rot. Make sure that you can still harvest those fields without them going down. If you got some fields where you're having some issues, make some changes on your farm, get those fields harvested early, and you may want to look at planting some different varieties going into next year. Well, one other thing that you might notice out in your fields is our Weed of the Week. If you've got it, we'll show you how to get it under control. Our Weed of the Week is coming up later in the show.